least he's doing that to synchronize all three different cameras, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm glad that she picked up on starting. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> I just got off of the vibe so quickly. 19 transactions in the past year and a half, 12 of which happened in the past three months, and five happened in one month alone. Today we have Salvaza here with us in another agent spotlight. And the reason we wanted to invite you here is to find out what are you doing, Salva? <laughs> Thank you so much for the intro. That's so kind of you. You know, I think like one of the main things that I do is not only the qualities that I bring as an individual, but the qualities we bring as a team, as the brokerage. It, a lot of what I do is really thanks to the training that I received from Westbrook Realty um, and just implementing that. So that goes some good communication, active listening, and knowing how to network with other um, agents, like other realtors on the listing or buyer side. And that's been really helping my clients get into homes or the other way around. Thank you, Salva. It means a lot for us to, to hear such feedback. Yeah. And I know it, it seems like you picked probably one of the worst times to get started uh, yeah. <laughs> in, in real estate during pandemic. And that's actually something I get a lot uh, being asked from new agents. Mm -hmm. Like, should I do real estate? Should I get into it? And I kind of want to use you as an example because you pick, like I said, one of the times that it's not ideal. Right. <laughs> still, you're able to plow through it. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think one of the things is it's really going to come down to work ethic and implementing, again, the tools that are provided to you, mm -hmm. right? So I was fortunate to be connected with a brokerage that provides me with a really good foundation um, and the training and the tools, and I simply implemented it. So, I mean... And did you get into it part-time, full-time? Full-time. Let's talk about that. So I work full-time, uh, I mean... I what's work full time. Is on it average, 40 I'm, hours, 50, 60. It's 50, 60. It's, it's 50, 60 hours. It's a very dedicated job. I mean, to be successful in real estate, you have to dedicate your time completely. Otherwise, you're not going to succeed in it. It's one of those things that you, yes, you are having flexible schedule. Absolutely. But you are kind of getting whatever you put into it. And so, Often, more often than not, it, it, we have to put in mm -hmm. that many hours, but yeah. look at your results. So that's exactly do. how um, much hours you put in. It really is really to how much success you want out of the career. So yep. if you want to have good success, then you have to put in the hard work. And if you're like, okay, well, I want to just have you know maybe one transaction a year, kind of see how it goes, then try it part time. But it's you're not going to succeed. Absolutely. And uh, I think uh, we had a meeting with you, goal setting meeting yes. back in uh, January yep. uh, this year. And one of your goals was to get at least one transaction a month. Yes. How are you doing so far as of uh, beginning of September? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, on average, I'm doing two transactions a month. And then the most that I did was in the month of June, which was five transactions. So that was quite the busy month, but it was very exciting. And um, three of those transactions were in the same day, within 24 hours, <laughs> so it was wow. just back to back. Yeah, I think I think we had that uh, that week. Uh, it just happened all within the same week when we Everything. have weekly team meetings, and we had to, on one of those meetings we had to announce that you just got into three transactions in a yep. same week. just back to back. It was all <laughs> the same day, which was super exciting for my clients and. I was really happy to give them the results that they're looking for. And those transactions, Salva, are they uh, happening mostly with buyers, sellers? Uh, mostly with buyers. Mm -hmm. So I am more um, buyer heavy with my clients. However, that doesn't sway me from speaking with sellers and, you know, really catering to them as well. It, it's really to whatever client that I am engaging with and whatever mm -hmm. their needs are. So if it's more buyers right now, that's great. And if it's more sellers, that's great too. It's all the same. I'm also curious, uh, coming back to June time, uh, May time, when we were getting into a lot of these transactions mm -hmm. at the same time with buyers, we were in really competitive market. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you battle that and how you were able to compete in multiple offer situations? You know, we actually have a very competitive offer strategy. Um, you know, we really personalize the transaction from sending video presentations for mm -hmm. offers, doing letters, speaking about our clients, um, and really networking and building rapport with the on the listing side. I think that's so important. Communication is so important and it's a team effort. So not only is it me speaking with the listing agent, it's the loan officer um, to vet for the clients, mm -hmm. to talk about that financial stability, 
to ensure that everything's going to close successfully. So, so it's a team. It's all the team players. And, and you sort of over communicate and overdo it, but I definitely, it definitely generates the good results. Yes. So everyone has their own way. <clears throat> sorry, for doing things. But for me, over communication is the best way. You're up against 10, 20 other offers. We don't know the level of communication they're doing, and if you were on the other side, you would feel so much safer working with someone that you know, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, it's a big transaction. So by the time we, we have placed my offer, the other agent knows me, they know my clients, so they can trust us. You know, and one thing that I want to connect this with is the fact that on a few of your recent transactions, we've heard feedback from listing agent that, hey, you were not the highest offer on the mm -hmm. table, mm -hmm. but we still wanted to go with you because, and finish that sentence, yeah. why, why, how are you able to do that? Because uh, you have the highest offer and still get it. Communication, communication and trust. Yeah, those are the two main reasons. And simply to say, you know, Salva, we love the way that you're presenting the offers. We love the way that you're communicating. It is very professional. So we trust that you're going to close this home. It really comes down to that. Yeah, I want to assume that uh, the way it looks to me is that when you get into this transaction, the way you communicate probably reflects on the way you're going to be acting in the actual transaction. Absolutely. And if it's a matter of, I don't know, $5,000, $10,000, but there is no communication from that other party yeah. about how it's going to go, they may lean towards you because, oh, how bad you, you and your, your mm -hmm. clients want it. And in some instances, it's been a higher difference than that. I think it was, I think the highest... Uh, well, I don't want to say the highest. I mean, one of the ones that off the top of my head that I remember, it was about a 40K difference. And we, they still went with us, and the home ended up appraising at their other offer that they got. So my client ended up gaining 50K. By the time they closed they already made equity. In 30 days, they already made um, equity. So it was, it was great. It was actually, it's a great win for me, and it's a great win it's a win for me because it's a win for my clients, is what I'm saying. So it was, it's awesome. That's impressive. Yeah. You know, one other thing I wanted to really highlight with you today is the fact that when I look at your transactions and addresses, they are literally all over the place. You have yeah. transactions in Brentwood, you have transactions in Mountain House, in San Jose, in Fremont. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you able to be at all of those places at the same time? And also, how are you getting clients in all of those different cities? Well, I'm able to be in all those places. <laughs> it's because I, I work full time, mm -hmm. right? And I, I allocate time for my clients so they feel like they're the only ones that are working with me. How I receive the leads is a large portion is through the brokerage, through the lead generation that Westbrook Realty does, through advertising, marketing, um, different avenues like we get. There's so many live transfers that we get where we're talking to real life people. Mm -hmm. um, and then through those people, we get, or I get, ref I always say we because it's a team, <laughs> but um, I then get referrals. Mm -hmm. So it becomes this really beautiful combination of lead generation that, again, gives you a really solid so running you're start. You're able to get uh, half of your uh, leads or clients from uh, the company, and then you're exactly. able to build relationship business yep. and get more uh, additional referrals from them. Exactly, and that's why I love Westbrook Realty so much is because they give you every tool available to have a strong foundation, right? And so there's no excuse. If, if I wasn't using those tools right and not being successful, it's really my fault, right? Because you have it in front of you. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Music to my ears. The right. way you put it, cannot uh, agree with you more. Yeah. And. Uh, are they initially looking in, in, in different cities or are you able to walk through them and kind of match mm -hmm. what, uh, what their purchasing power equals to their abilities? Uh, how, how do you go through that conversation? Yeah, so it's important for me to be a re realist and respectfully with the clients when they're looking in areas. And especially with how the market has been this, this past year. Especially with the market, especially when, you know, I ask them questions like, what are they looking for? What are their needs? What are their wants? And of course, what is their respectful, comfortable price point? Mm -hmm. And if we can't find that within their location, then we start working together more to see what is a reasonable commute for them. Mm -hmm. um, and so then start exploring outside we the start area. exploring outside to get most value for their money. Because when we're on the buyer side, our goal is to get most value for what they're paying for, right? And of course, on the selling side is getting the highest price and the highest or the best offer in terms of terms, price, whatever it mm -hmm. is. So when it comes to areas, it's really client specific, um, but it's, 
and it's not like a. So it's sort of like a matchmaker. It's match a matchmaker. <laughs> yes, I'm playing Cupid with homes. I'm, I'm gonna match you with this home in this location and yes. so on, based on what you just described me. Yeah, yeah. That's so I'm playing awesome. Cupid. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and finally, to conclude this interview, I wanted to ask you if you could recommend something for uh, people that are thinking to get into real estate or just start in real estate and feel like it's overwhelming, what would be your advice for a new agent? Well, you know, I think one of the first things is real estate is an overwhelming career. So you have to separate your emotions out of the business and you have to join, if especially as a first um, time agent, like I was once myself with zero experience, um, you have to join a brokerage that's going to give you a strong foundation. It starts from there. If you join a brokerage where, oh, it sounds you know really good, but they don't have training, they don't have how you're going to generate the leads, you're not going to succeed and you're going to get disappointed, right? And then once you get those tools, like Westbrook Realty gives, <laughs> and I mean, just, and I'm, I mean, I feel like I'm telemarketing. Yeah, th th this was <laughs> supposed to be agent spotlight, yeah, exactly. talking all about you. But and I'm yet, trying to say, yeah, it's it's a great pleasure to to hear all of yeah. that feedback. Yeah, so it means I mean, a lot to us. Of course, so I'm saying, like, you know, when you join a brokerage, it gives the tools. Then you have to implement it well and strong, and be dedicated to it. If you're not dedicated to it, you're not going to succeed. That's awesome. it. Just dedication. Well, well said. Well, Salva, great having you here, and I hope to invite you back here in the next uh, six months or a year to share more success stories from you. And today, we thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. That's a wrap.